So welcome to the lecture sessions on transmission and uh, distribution. Brought to you under the VTU e sectiona program. So under this program, VTU has channelized access to all the students of VTU through online lectures uploaded. I am Professor Uma Rao from RV College of Engineering, bringing you this lectures. So this is my third session on uh, transmission and uh, distribution. So in the first class, first session, I uh, discussed about the classification of the lines and uh, into short line, medium line, long line, and how we consider different parameters, then performance parameters of interest. And in the second class, we saw about the short line model, where we neglect the line capacitance and model the line simply as a series R X. And uh, for that, we derived the ABCD parameters. They're very simple. A and D are one. B is equal to Z, which is the impedance of the line, and C is equal to zero. So in this session, uh, what we would uh, do is we would consider more examples of uh, how to solve the problems in short lines. So let us take this. Uh, question, a single phase overhead transmission line delivers 500 kilowatts at 33 kV point APF lag. The total resistance and reactants are 8 and 16 ohms respectively of the line. Using the short line model, determine the sending end voltage using exact equation. And I also discussed how you can approximate it We'll see what is the difference when you do an approximate equation and the sending end power factor, the voltage regulation, and the transmission efficiency. So, firstly, where do you start? So, I told you whenever you have any problem, start analyzing with the data. And for the lines, always start from the receiving end because most often you will have all the receiving end data. You'll be given the load, the power factor, the receiving end voltage, etc., etc. Clear? So now where do I start? You start with this because I put, put uh, too many things on the slide so that I can relate to it and just see the step-by-step -step procedure we'll do. First, I have the receiving end voltage is 33 kV. Clear? And it's a single phase. It's a single phase. Then let's find out cos phi r. Power factor is given to be 0.8. Therefore, sine phi r will be 0.6. So in your equations for the voltage, sending end voltage, you need cos phi r and sine phi r. So you better calculate it and keep it. Next, uh, to find out anything, I need the receiving end current. I need the receiving end current. So let's find out what is the receiving end current. It is single phase. So receiving end current will simply be P by Vr cos phi r. P is equal to Vi cos phi. You know, you're very familiar with that formula, right, from first year um, uh, engineering course. So P is 500 kilowatts. So 500 into 10 to the power of 3. And another place where students make mistakes very often are here in, uh, you know, the units. So it is in kilowatts. But when you, need, when you want the current in amperes, you have to convert it into watts. So it is 500 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by voltage is 33 kV. So 33 into 10 to the power of 3 by power factor is 0.8. So I have 18.94 amperes. So now I have calculated my receiving end current. This is the magnitude. Angle is minus 36.86. So you know the receiving end phasor current current phasor is known to you. Okay. Next, I want the sending end voltage. 
So you can use the formula or simply you just, you can write this. Vs is equal to Vr plus Ir into Z. Exact. This is exact. There's no approximation here in this model. So let me take Vr as the reference. So it is 33 kV. That is 33,000 volts at an angle of zero degrees. Why the zero degrees? Because I'm taking it as the reference. Because I'm taking it as the reference. Now, IR, magnitude you have already found out, 18.94. And angle is minus 36.86. Why minus 36.86? 0.8PF lag. So cos inverse of 0.8 is 36.86. So now I have the current phasor. Right? And Z is given to you. R plus J X, eight plus J sixteen. Therefore, V S is V R plus I into Z. I into Z. Now, very very often students make mistakes in just this simple calculation. Complex arithmetic calculations, everybody makes a lot of mistakes. And ultimately what happens is your examiner will be looking at looking for some answer and your answers will not match, right? If you ask me, I would give you almost 85% of the mark if you write up to this stage because that is correct. But then there, you can't say there are some examiners who may, who may want an accurate answer. So please be careful when you do the calculations, right? And um, uh, you see here what I have done now, it is all... Now this, right? So you need to multiply these rectangular coordinates. You have to multiply. And then I get it in rectangular form. And then I put it in polar form. I need the polar form because I need the angle. I need the angle. So you need it in polar form. So when you do the calculations, the sending end voltage happens to be 33.3 at an angle of 0.26 degree kV small angle it is leading leading the receiving end voltage by 33 point uh, uh, by 0.26 degrees and the magnitude is 33.3 kV clear so now i have found out the sending end voltage what is the sending end current same as the receiving end current because it is a short line model so sending end current is also equal to ir at an angle of uh, this phi r so it is also equal to this. This is also the sending end current. Clear? Yeah. So now I found out the sending end current and sending end voltage. Now, let me find the approximate voltage. This is only the magnitude. So you remember in session two, for short line model, I derived the approximate uh, equation for the sending end voltage. So the approximate magnitude of the sending end voltage is Vr plus Ir into R cos phi R plus Ir into X sine phi R. So Vs, Vr, I substitute for Is, Ir, R, cos phi R, everything I get 33.3. What did you get the exact solution? 33.3. So there's no, I told you, you know, the approximation doesn't make too much of a difference. You can as well you do it this way. There's not much of a difference. So the approximate equation yields very good result in this case. Clear? So I found out the sending end voltage. Now, I have the, I need the sending end power factor. So I have Vs is 33.3 at an angle of 0.26 degree kV. So with respect to what? This is your, the, this is your, the, the reference is your receiving end, receiving end voltage. And Is is equal to Ir. Sorry, the. Is is equal to IR. So that is 18.94 at an angle of minus 36.86 degrees amperes. And this is also with respect to this angle is with respect to receiving an voltage. So whenever you want the power factor of the sending end, it, you need the angle between the sending end voltage and the receiving end voltage, right? Make sure that the angles are with respect to a common reference. Sometimes what happens when we calculate Right. I might have calculated one angle with respect to one reference and another angle with respect to another reference. So be very careful. So in this case, however, both the angles are with respect to the receiving end voltage as reference. And therefore, the angle difference between these two. So this is positive. This is negative. So it will be the sum of the two is 37.12 degrees. 
So the sending end power factor is cos phi s is 0 0.797. It's slightly less because sending end voltage is leading. Okay. Now, I need the percentage regulation. It is Vs minus Vr by Vr. So that is 33.3. .3 in For KV, I had just taken 3. So it is actually 33.302 minus 33 by 33. That is 0 0.915. Excellent regulation. Excellent. Normally, short lines. Because the drop is less, you know, the line length is less, the regulation will be very good. The regulation will be very good. Okay. Now, I need to find the efficiency. So, the sending end power, it's a single phase, remember? So, it is simply Vs, Is, cos by S. And Vs is 33.303 into 18.94 and 0.797. So I get 502.69 kilowatts. And therefore, the efficiency is output power is 500 kilowatts. By input is 502.69 into 100. That is 99.46%. Very good. Good efficiency. Clear? Very easy to calculate. Let's move on. Let me take another example. A three-phase line. So that was a single phase. Now we will do for three phase. A three-phase line delivers five megawatts. Normally, three phase, the power output will be more. So five megawatts, that is 5,000 kilowatts. Okay. So five megawatts at 33 kV, 0.8 PF lag. The resistance and reactance of the line is 3 and 6 ohms per phase, respectively. Again, determine all that sending end voltage, percentage regulation, efficiency using short line model. Very similar to what we did previously, except that this is three phase. And uh, the example we saw earlier was single phase. Okay. So whenever you have three phase uh, circuits, you have to solve it on a single phase equivalent. So single phase equivalent means you have to consider all line to neutral voltages and, and phase currents. Okay. And power factor is always the phase power factor because R, X, load, everything, it will be only the phase power factor. And we always assume the system is balanced. Okay. So it is 33 kV. Therefore, the receiving end voltage, this is the line to neutral voltage or phase voltage. It is 33 kV divided by root 3. 33 kV divided by root 3. So this is the phase voltage, 19052.56. Clear phase voltage. Next, IR. IR is P by 3 VR cos pi R. Can you tell why did I put the three there? Why did I put the three? Because the power in a three phase circuit is three times the phase power. And what is the phase power? Vr, where R is the line to neutral voltage, I R cos by R. Therefore, three times that. So three times Vr, I R cos by R is the total three phase power. If you divide this by 3, so the total is 500. If you divide 500 by 3, this denominator 3, you need not use. Okay, fine. So I, are, I hope you got this 3. Why this, this 3 is there? So because P by 3 is the power per phase. And all these are phase quantities. So I R is power is pi into 10 to the power of 6. 5 megawatts divided by 3. Uh, VR is 19052. You can neglect this 0.56. Okay, anyway, I've taken it. If you want, you can neglect it. And then power factor is 0 0.8. So I get 109.34. You can also find the power as P by root 3 VRL cos pi R. So this 3, you, know, you don't have to use, right? So VRL would be the line to line voltage, which will be 33 kV. So you can do root 3 and this will be 33 kV cos pi R. You'll get the same answer. Because I, I after all, I took the phase voltage VR as VRL by root 3. So this so you, will, you will get the same answer.
So we have all the calculations. IR I have calculated. So in the previous problem, we did it using phasor. Vs is equal to Vr plus Irz. I'm demonstrating another way of doing it. Okay. By using the expression which we derived from the short line model phasor. Right. So this is what we got. Vs is equal to root of Vr plus Ir cos phi r plus Ir x sin phi r whole squared plus ir x cos phi r minus ir into r sin phi r whole squared. In fact, this equation, is it familiar to you? Have you, you do you somehow feel you have done it somewhere else? Hmm? Possibly you would have done it in alternators where the V would be the terminal voltage of the alternator, Vr, whatever is Vr here, it would represent by V and Vs would be the internal EMF of the alternator. So this is exactly the, the phasor diagram would be the same. This is the expression you would use to calculate the internal per phase um, voltage generated of the alternator if you know the terminal voltage and the power, su uh, power supply from which you can calculate the current. Okay, same expression. Fine. So now let's see VR. VR is 19052.56 volts. Then IR is 109.34. We calculate that that. Then resistance is uh, 3 ohms and cost phi R is 0.8. Then again, IR is 109.34, X is 6 ohms and sine phi R is 0.6. Here, so we have all the data. I substitute and I get Vs is 19711.33 volts. Okay, this is my magnitude. This is my magnitude, but I also need the angle. So this is the real part and this is the quadrature component. So I can write in phasor form, in phasor form, I can write Vs is equal to 19708.6 or point this, I think I just, uh, the calculation which we have done, right? You will find some small differences here if sometimes uh, because you know, we will try to round off some things. Plus J, 3.328.02. So I get 19711.33 at an angle. So directly in this expression, this part is the real part and this part is the imaginary part. So you can also represent directly as a phasor with this. So I get... I find out Vs, I get 19711.33. Please remember this is the line to neutral voltage. Line to neutral voltage. I multiply it by root 3. I get 34.141 kV. Clear? So this is the sending end voltage. What is the angle? 0.953. Whether it is space or neutral, the angle with respect to the receiving end uh, uh, voltage would still be the same. Angle you don't multiply by root 3. It's only the magnitude. Clear. So we know that. Next, what do I find? I want to find the regulation. So regulation is Vs 34.141 minus Vr by Vr into 100. So 3.457. You see in the first example, previous example I considered, the regulation was very good. 0.9 something we got. Now it's slightly higher because line parameters are different. Power is more. 5 I megawatts. So power is more. So when power is more, current will be more. Current is more, drop is more. So regulation will be more, obviously. Next, losses. Losses is 3i squared r. Now, if you remember in single phase, we did 2i squared r because I have two conductors, one forward and one return. In three phase, I have three line currents, right? So three line conductors. You can ask what about the neutral, but it is balanced. So neutral current will be zero. There is no loss in that. Right. Therefore, 3, I is 109.34, R is 3. So this will give you the loss in all the three phases together. All the three phases put together. So this is the loss. 107.597 kilowatts. Clear? So this is your receiving end power. This is your receiving end power. Now, percentage efficiency is simply output power that is 5000 kilowatt 
divided by output plus losses. Output plus losses is the input. That is 97.8389 keep percentage. Got it? So this is a different way of finding the efficiency. You could you can also find the input power. You know Vs, you know Is, and you can find out cos phi s, and you can also find the input power as three times Vs Is cos phi s. So I would suggest you do it uh, for practice and see that you get the same uh, efficiency. You should get the same. Clear. So here I have demonstrated how to calculate the efficiency by calculating the losses. Right. This is also an, another way you can cal calculate the efficiency. Now let's see whether uh, uh, we can see some more problems. So again, I have a three phase transmission line that delivers 30 megawatts at 0.9 PF lag. Okay, it is 30 megawatts at 0.9 PF lag. And this 132 kV high voltage, one centimeter square conductors, that is the area of cross section and resistivity is uh, 2.82 into 10 to the power of minus eight ohm meters. Now be very careful of the units are used. Estimate the distance over which the load can be delivered if transmission losses are to be restricted to 5% of power delivered. See, I'm viewing the same problem in different contexts. In one, you're given the load details, voltage details, etc., and asked to find out the performance parameters like regulation, efficiency, etc. And here, I am um, here. The problem is slightly different. Here, it, 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 you are not given the resistance or anything as such. You are asked, what is the line restriction? If I cannot exceed five percent loss, okay. This is another another design constraint. You might be asked to design this way. Okay, so now let us see how we do. It's all the same equation. There are no extra equations. You should only know under what context, on under what context, how to use the data given to you and solve the problem. That's that is all, right? You have the same equations for voltage, same equations for regulation, efficiency, everything. Nothing is different. Now we will see. So first, what do I know? I'll calculate IR. See what have I used PR? What is PR, by the way? Yeah, it delivers 30 megawatts at 132 kV, 0.9 PF. So 30 megawatts is 30 into 10 to the power of 6. Kilowatts is into 10 to the power of 3. Megawatts is into 10 to the power of 6. By root 3, then VRL, line voltage is 132 kV. Okay, and this is into 10 to the power of 3. And uh, 132 into 10 to the power of 3 and cos phi r is 0.9. So I have 145.79 amperes. This is the receiving end current. Now what is my restriction? My restriction is that the losses should not be more than 5%. Okay, how much is that? So I have 5% of... Uh, uh, 30 megawatts, that is 1.5 megawatts. 10% yeah, is 3, 5% is 1.5 megawatts. So what should be the maximum length of the line if my loss has to be 5% or less than 5%? That's the question. Fine. So I know the loss is 1.5 megawatts. Is there any other formula for loss by which I can equate it to 1.5 megawatts? Do I know what the loss is? Let us see. Yes, I know the loss is 3i squared r in a three-phase system. So I have 3, then I have i is 145.79, and I have r. And I have, this should be equal to 1.5 megawatts, the worst case. So I have r is equal to 23.52 ohms. Okay. Now, your problem here is area is in centimeter square and resistivity is in ohm meter. So we will convert to the same unit. So resistivity, let it be 2.82 into 10 to the power of minus 8 ohm meter. Area is 1 centimeter square, which is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 4 meter square. 
here. So I know rho. Now I know the formula. R is equal to rho L by A. So R is equal to rho L by A. R, I have got 23.52 ohms. The restriction is because of the 5% loss, which I cannot exit, exit, exceed. Then rho is 2.82 into 10 to the power of 8. I have length, which I have to calculate. And I have rho, area. Area of cross-section is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 4. So when I find L, remember these units are in meters. This is ohm meter and this is meter square. So you will get your length also in meters. In the previous problem, I did both were in centimeters. So I got the length in centimeters. So now I get it in meters and that is 83.4 kilometers. 83.4 kilometers. It's fine. Okay, this is a short line model is okay for this because it is less than around 100 kilometers. Now, don't ask me, ma'am, in the slide you showed less than 80 kilometers. This is 83. So, is this model valid? Yes, it, this model is valid. I told you that 80 is not a sharp line. Above 80, you should use, you should not use the model. It's not like that. The model even you can use for a 300 kilometer line if you don't, if, you, if that capacitance is not important to you. Here? Yeah. So now I'm, I'm giving you different kinds of problems where different amount and different kind of data is presented. Now let us take this. So here a three phase line delivers a load at 0.8 PF flag. The sending end voltage and receiving end voltage are 139 kV and 131.8 kV. The impedance of the line is 5 plus J9 ohms per phase. Determine the receiving end power, the sending end power, and the transmission efficiency. Now what you're given, you're given the sending end voltage and receiving end voltage. Till now, we were not given the sending end voltage. Right. I was given the power at the receiving end from which I found the current. And then adding the drops, I calculated the sending end voltage. I calculated the sending end voltage. Now I'm not given any of that. So I'm given the sending end voltage and the receiving end voltage. We'll see what to do. Very simple. I told you equations don't change. So let us see what I can do with this. Yeah. The receiving end voltage is 131.8 by root 3. Is it 131? Yeah. 131.8 by root 3. Why by root 3? Can you tell me? Good. Because I want to convert it into phase voltage. Similarly, the sending end is 139 by root 3. So I have the receiving end line to neutral voltage and the sending end line to neutral voltage. I know the receiving end power factor is 0.8 and R plus Jx I know. Now I have this formula Vs is equal to Vr plus Ir R cos phi R plus Ir X sin phi R. You remember what is this? Where did we see this? This is the approximate equation for sending end voltage. Okay. So I know Vs, sending end voltage. This is Vr. And then Ir. Ir, I don't know because I don't know the load. I don't know Ir. R is 5. Cos phi R is 0.8. Then again, I have Ir. X is 9. And sine phi R is 0.6. So from this, I find out IR is 442.23 amperes. Okay, I found out IR. So if you know the sending end voltage magnitude and receiving end voltage magnitude, you can find out IR, provided you know power factor or load. One of them you have to know. Right? Next, I find the receiving end power. Do you know what it is? Yes, I know what it is. It is three times the phase power. And what is the phase power? Vr, Ir, cos phi R. So Pr is three times Vr, Ir, cos phi R by 1000 kilowatts. So three, Vr, Ir, Ir I just found out, 442.23, cos phi R is 0 0.8, divided by 1000. Why did I divide by 1000? To get in kilowatts. If you don't divide, you'll get in watts. That's all. So I get 
80,763.5 kilowatts, which is nothing but 80.76 megawatts. Okay, fine. Next, I know the sending end voltage. I know the receiving end uh, voltage, right? I need to find out the sending end power factor. I need to get the sending end power factor to find out the sending end. Uh, they've, they've asked you to find out. Otherwise, the sending end power you can find out. 3 Vs Is cos phi S. But then you don't know phi S. I can still find out the sending end power by I know the receiving end power is 80.76. I can add losses to it. 3 I squared R and find out the sending end power. No problem. But here in the problem, they've asked you to find the sending end power factor. So I use this formula. You remember when I did the first time I did the short line model, I showed you this formula. I told you it will be useful somewhere. This is another way of writing the relationship between the sending end voltage and the receiving end voltage. So I have Vsi cos phi s is equal to this. So cos phi s is Vr cos phi r IRR divided by Vs. So Vr is 76095 volts, right? Cos phi R is 0.8. IR is 442.23. R is 5. Vs is 80252. I get 0.786 lag. The sending end power factor. Now I can find out the efficiency. It's PR by PR plus 3I squared R. So this is PR. This is 3. This is I. I squared. And this is R. Okay. So I get totally 96.49% is the efficiency. You see efficiency has reduced because when power levels increase, efficiency will come down. So this uh, problem illustrated to you how to solve in a different way. So uh, in this uh, session, I have tried to uh, uh, illustrate to you a number of numerical examples in the short line model. Clear? Yeah. So you, uh, you only have three or four relationships, right? And I didn't keep deriving the constants, ABCD constants in each of the problem because it is very simple. So for a short line model, ABCD is simply 1, Z, 0, 1. So there is nothing to um, uh, illustrate in that. There is nothing to illustrate. So we didn't solve any um, uh, any of the numericals to solve for the uh, constants. Now you have you can find the sending end voltage using exact equation, or you can simply do it by using the phasors arithmetic. V S is equal to V R plus I R into Z. You can use that, or you can use the formula. You can use the approximate formula. All of them will give you the same answers, right? And then at the receiving end, you may be just given the power factor. Then if you know the sending end and receiving end voltage, you can calculate all the parameters. Or you may be given the load and the power factor, load in, uh, as in uh, the power. So in that case also, you can find out. So given any of the parameters, you can find out. So whenever you uh, do the problems, so just take a, spend a minute, spend a minute to introspect on the problem, what is the data given and how you will solve it and how you will solve it. Clear. Now, all the problems I have solved are from old BTU papers. Of course, for the 18 uh, scheme, there are not too many, but the syllabus is the same and you will have similar kinds of um, uh, uh, problems. Okay. So if you, if you solve these problems, do it by yourself, then you can definitely do your examination problems. And my advice for all of you is, please take down a pen and a paper and solve these problems. Okay. Thank you.